Dude, that's my fucking dream van. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, right? oh my God. <laughs> Stranger in a strange land. I know. It's stupidly cool. That's fucking killer. Oh, my God. That is that is fucking killer. Oh, my God. That's like the sickest. That is the coolest fucking van I've ever seen in my life. That is bad as fuck. Dude, uh, this is uh, this is where Muhammad Ali's buried. Are you tired of watching hours of confusing videos by guitar music theory experts on YouTube and still not understanding a darn thing they're on about? Then you need the Song Songwriting Inspiration app. For only $5, you can organize 6,000 guitar chords into relative major and minor keys and get tons of fresh new ideas for more sophisticated chord progressions and songs. Downloading Song is like downloading music theory straight into your brain. Link is in the description. Hey, how's it going, dudes? Brad the Guitologist here. It's Friday, and we're going to talk a little bit about the news. We're also going to do a lot of other fun things. This is basically going to be a free-for-all video, so definitely stick around if you like uh, if you like a lot of randomness. For all of you guys who were hoping that we could get back to some kind of sense of uh, normalcy and live in a place where a world where uh, people understood math, understood how to calculate things. You know, and didn't just take some fucking expert's word for everything all the goddamn time. Here we have this. Now, Ticketmaster plans to check your vaccine status for concerts. This coming out of Billboard magazine yesterday. Uh, Monday's news that pharmaceutical company Pfizer's early reports, early results on a new COVID-19 vaccine showed 90% efficacy rate on a Initial clinical trial, I can't read today for fuck's sake, have given concert professionals hope that the business can start mounting a return in 2021. I'm not sure what they were waiting for anyway, to be quite honest. You know, cases is not deaths, people. Uh, cases and deaths are two different calculations. Yes, cases can skyrocket, but unless deaths are skyrocketing at, a, at, at the same sort of rate uh, or in proportion to the cases, then you are you are going to have a lowering death rate, which is actually a good thing. The fact that people are getting a virus and then recovering from it should give us hope that this virus is not that fucking big of a deal. But here we go. Now we're going to not get back to normal, essentially. We're going to get to a new normal where we have to submit to this bullshit. So if we want to go to a concert, probably the people who are performing at concerts which is going to include some of my audience because my audience, of course, is musicians. Congratulations, guys. This is the world that we're going to be seeing is a world where we have to submit to stupid shit like this. I am okay with this. Limiting the freedom of people is a great idea as long as it's in the name of stopping a virus with a 0.35% death rate. I am happy that Big Brother graciously affords me the opportunity to express my real opinions without algorithmic throttling or censorship. And I am blessed with an audience that isn't constantly telling me to stick to amps. I have no testicles. I only have two shriveled bean-sized glands where testicles used to be before the new normal. I love the new normal. I love Big Brother. Two plus two equals five. You know, we're living in a very interesting time right now, and it's not one that I, I feel like uh, I belong in, to be quite honest. I mean, show me back to the late 1800s, please. I, I would rather, much rather live during that time and put up with uh, any and all the problems that would have existed then and put up with this crap, this new social engineering, brave new world bullshit that we're entering right now. I'm, I am absolutely not interested in, and I'll be honest with you, I'd rather put a fucking bullet through my head than go much further along this path that we started on. And that's just me. You guys don't have to agree, but fuck it. There it is. I said it. Are we going to have to actually physically revolt to get things to go back to normal, to get people to start seeing the mathematics of of this uh, 
so-called pandemic. I mean, th this is, you know, there is no justification. I've done the calculations myself. There are numbers that the CDC has actually put up for the number of people they claim have died, which is an inflated number. It's up, what, up over 200 and something thousand people. But that number is highly inflated, and it's inflated in, uh, in, in a demonstrable way. They've actually said how they're inflating that number. Uh, it's, not, it's not up for debate, guys, that they inflated that number. So that number is the high end, okay, of the possible calculation, which I've done the calculation. It's 0.67% on the high end kill rate. The death rate of this virus is 0.67% on the high end. That's via, that's with the inflated number. On the very low end, uh, it's extremely low. But if you take the median between the low and the high, you get something like 0.35% kill rate. And that's about, I would say that's that's closer to reality. And it's it's on the order of a... Of a of a bad flu season and we're freaking out over this you know we're going to close down for another four to six weeks come on man this is this is fucking dumb and we need to i'll tell you what if you don't agree with me then get the fuck out unsubscribe and just go the fuck away i don't want you on my channel leave okay I don't need you you can go to the other side of the fucking battlefield because i see where the shit's lining up and this is where we're headed. You're going to be on one side. I'm going to be on the other side fighting for freedom. You're going to be a little cuck motherfucker uh, who's just going to stand there and take it up the ass every time some expert uh, says bend over. So you you be my guest. If that's the way you want to live your life, then be my guest. I had this virus back in what? Uh, Febu late February of last year, or the, of this year rather. And I lived... Yeah, I coughed for like three weeks, and I lived. It's okay. I think most people are going to get this. We're not going to go... You know what? Fuck it. I'm not fucking... I'm not saying this fucking shit. It's been a little while since I've done some viewer mail, so let's get uh, some viewer mail. I've got four pieces of viewer mail here. A couple of them I'm going to uh, do reviews on some stuff, and I thought we might open those first, and then we'll check out what's in these two boxes over here. So first up, we've got this one, which is from Bionic, Bionic, I think that's how he's pronouncing that, Bionic Audio. So this guy contacted me and said um, he had designed a pedal that he wanted to send me to check out. So this should be pretty cool. Okay, so again, this is his company, Bionic Audio. And there's his website if you want to go check him out. So after a lot of experimentation, I created my own circuits, a mashup. A uh, chimera of two classic pedals. I use a free version of Audio Desk Eagle to draw my circuit and then solder the parts, paint the enclosure before screen printing the boxes. Also, did the illustration for the pedal. Uh, part of the circuit is a soft clipped Marshall Governor with the Marshall Tone Stack coupled with an MXR Distortion Plus circuit. The distortion switch gives the MXR chip a solid gain boost. Then it transforms the pedal from an overdrive to an old school distortion. The pedals are available on my website. I started a small batch of 10 pedals to see if people can be interested. Yeah, very, very nice. Nice printing on that. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Wow, that does look really nice, Daniel. So it looks like we've got controls for uh, gain, distortion switch, volume uh bass middle and treble and yeah that's that looks wonderful dude so we will do uh more on this pedal in the future in, a, in another video uh, for now let's go ahead and open a couple of the other things uh, that have been sent
Okay, so this next package is from a company called Singular Sound, um, and this is going to take a bit of a learning curve for me, um, and I just, so far, since I've gotten this box, I just haven't had the time to dedicate to what it would take to, you know, sit down with it and really get to know this equipment, I, and I know what they've sent me here, and it it looks pretty amazing from uh, from all of the videos and everything that I've seen. Uh, this singular sound stuff just looks incredible. Um, but I just, like I said, I haven't had the time so far to sit down and really uh, dedicate the time to get to know this stuff. Because I am not a pedal guy, really, and I'm not a, I'm certainly not a looper guy. Um, but what he has sent me here basically is a complete loop station. You know, you can lay down your own beats and stuff with this. Uh, you've, they also have included the foot switch uh, that will help you uh, switch the beat buddy and do accents and on-off stuff. And I guess this also will let you remotely with your feet, you know, kind of in the songs and everything. So that's, you know, um, that's probably an essential thing if you're going to use one of these to have the switch also, I'm guessing. So this is their Singular Sound Eros Loop Studio, and it just looks really nice, really incredible. And if I were to get to know it, this could be uh, really fun because I have a practice amp where I sit down and I kind of just jam along with loops and stuff like that, you know, just to keep my chops up and uh, stay sharp, you know, on my guitar playing. But this is something that would allow you kind of the flexibility to sort of do your own compositions and still have, you know, a drummer behind you. This is something that's going to take a bit of a learning curve. There's also uh, an update, I think, on their website. So the first thing I'm going to have to do is update this unit. Uh, there's, a, I think, a firmware update where they, um, they improve a couple of the functions. Uh, oh, my gosh. Wow, that switch feels sexy. Yeah, so it's, you know, it's got the volume where you could, everything, is, everything is controllable with your feed, essentially. But yeah, this has got the this has got the MIDI link. Probably, I'm guessing you will link your Beat Buddy up with this thing. This is going to be a fun one, uh, and this is going to be a, a whole video essentially. But I wanted to at least open it um, and give these guys a shout out uh, for the time being because, like I said, this is going to take some um, time on my part to get to know this equipment to be able to do a proper demo. What on God's green mother earth is that? What the hell is that thing? That is some kind of massive grasshopper on my window. Holy crap. Look at this dude. He's freaking huge. He's huge. He's some kind of grasshopper. What the hell are you, dude? I'm tempted to open this window and catch him. He's freaking awesome. Look at him. Oh, dude, he just flew. Oh, man, he flew off into the night like a freaking bat. <laughs> okay, so it turns out this thing is probably a, an insect known as a Katie did or a whatever the hell this is. Tetangonidae. Tetangonidae. Also known as a bush cricket uh, or a longhorned grasshopper. Apparently, it's, it's closer related to crickets than grasshoppers. It has no relation to grasshoppers, apparently, according to some of the sites I've seen. But yeah, just interesting looking creatures. There are, somewhere I read was 3,000, other places like over 6,000 different species of this thing. And uh, yeah, they, they tend to mimic their surroundings. And for people in the U.S., you would probably recognize them as the creatures that make the night sound. The Katie did. Katie didn't. Katie did. Katie didn't. So something definitely familiar to me. I've grown up uh, hearing this insect all my life, and I've seen them before as well, but never put two and two together and knew that this was the creature that made that noise. So very interesting. Learned something today. And specifically, the one that I saw here uh, looks like it was the angle wing Katie did, or also known as the microcentrum rhombifolium, the greater angle wing Katie did or broad wing Katie did. Very interesting. Okay, so the next piece of mail, this one is from Jeff Thomason. So he noticed in one of my videos, I uh, was given a tour of my house here, and I had a couple of uh, microphones 
set up in my living room because, you know, I, I don't really collect them necessarily, but I have a couple of, you know, older mics that I do have set up. He said, I've got a couple that you might want. Uh, do you want these? And I said, well, heck yeah, I want those. <laughs> those look awesome. This is an old school, very old school, Electro Voice uh, Model 630. This is, uh, impedance is 50 ohms. This has got still got the old school connector, the old Amphenol style, or no wait. Hell, that's hardwired. Oh, no, no, I unscrewed the wrong thing. Yeah, this has got the old Amphenol style connector, I think. Right? Uh, no. No, that's got a modern XLR style, doesn't it? I think that's I think that's straight up XLR style connector. Stuff is just not made like this anymore, man. This uh, you can feel the quality of this like uh, this thing is beautiful. This is absolutely gorgeous. This is supposed to be one of those that you can you know, you grab it to speak. So this is a switch. Uh, right here so you can mute basically mute yourself if it, if you don't have this in the down position but you can also lock it in the down position so it'll stay on right yeah that's exactly what it is i'm fascinated just by the switch <laughs> that is super sweet so yeah the uh, electro voice model 630 Okay, so the Model 630 is an omnidirectional dynamic microphone. Uh, it has a frequency response from 60 hertz up to 11,000 hertz. It does have an optional uh, quick change connector that you can get with these that will change it easily from, from high impedance to low impedance or vice versa. It also gives you instructions here on the, uh, the official PDF in addition to uh, the frequency response curve, which is very flat all the way across. There's a little bit of a bump in the upper portion, but it's very flat otherwise. Uh, because it's omnidirectional also, it means that you can, you can kind of be anywhere in the field of the microphone. You don't have to be right in front of it at all times in order for it to pick up. However, it picks up the highs the best when you're, when you're straight on. It gives you a wiring diagram. Uh, but it also in this gives you gives you a diagram for understanding how you can change the uh, impedance even if you don't buy the quick connector uh, that you know is supposed to connect on the cord. You can actually go in and rewire the cord um, to from high impedance, which is this wiring. You see here, pin uh, pin one is going to one side of the transformer and also to the case ground, uh, while pin two is going to the other side of uh, the transformer there uh, with no connection on pin three, but you can change that uh, to this configuration over here. And if you do that, then you have uh, uh, low impedance uh, connectivity at that point. So that's kind of cool that you can do that. And I may uh, make sure at some point I'll open this up and make sure that that probably I'll leave it on low impedance because uh, that's the way I would prefer to use it. Um, it just, when, when you're using uh, low impedance, um, it just tends, you can run longer cables and things like that without uh, loss. Um, also, it tends to be quieter. Uh, all sorts of benefits, really, for running low impedance uh, signals. So, so yeah, so that's the Electro Voice 630. Looks like, a, looks like it could be a pretty cool little microphone to experiment with. I may try sticking this on a cabinet or something in the future. But that, that's, that's really, that's a beautiful, beautiful mic. But, yeah, I think the one that goes on this stand is, is, is also in here. Oh, we got a spring missing off something. You see how awesome this thing's gonna be? Where's this? Where's that spring? I just saw it. There's the base for the Electro Voice. Electro Voice Buchanan, Michigan, model 428A. What do we got here? Oh, we've got some tubes as well. There's an old Kenrad 6SK7. Oh, there's an old RCA 6V6. That'll be a good tube. There's another, there's a tongue sole. So definitely that'll go to use. This is a 6SF5. Not sure what that is. That's off of a, it's out of some kind of radio. There's a 6, uh, 6J5. That is the exact tube that would have gone in that, that 1953 Fender twin amp <laughs> that we, uh, 
serviced recently. Isn't that the way things always work, though? It's like, you know, speak of the devil kind of thing. It's like, I, I, I don't think I've ever mentioned a 6J5 tube in the entire time I've been doing YouTube. And then I will say a 6J5, and then a, a, one appears. <laughs> it's just... You know, it's every now and then you you something like that will happen, and you just get this sense that you know God or whatever it is, you know, the universe itself, the the knowing universe is sitting there just winking at you. You know, oh, that's gorgeous, dude. That's gorgeous. So I forget the model number on this thing. Okay, so it's still kind of hard to say for sure exactly what I have here, but I think um, it is a reproduction, possibly of a sure. Uh, 5B microphone, which was a carbon microphone that uh, was originally produced uh, in the 1920s and 30s by Shure. Uh, and you can see one example uh, right here, but this one has a button uh, on the outside here, but you can see it still has this same style ring. Now, this ring was actually patented by Shure, uh, and it's one of the, I think it is the first patent that Shure ever was awarded by the U.S. Patent Office, and you can see it right here. They applied for it in 1935, although it was in production uh, before that date, I believe. Uh, but you can actually read, this is a pretty good website, you can kind of read about the history of carbon-style uh, microphones, which go back to the late 1800s and are pretty much the first microphones to, uh, to really be viable, and they kind of took over the telephony market after a certain point. They were pretty ubiquitous by the time Sure came along. Here you can see a schematic for one. Basically what it amounted to is you had some carbon granules, which was like anthracite coal, which would be placed in between two thin uh, diaphragms that would be clamped uh, in this mechanism here. And the carbon uh, would respond to varying pressures uh, in the sound waves that were hitting it. And that would also, that would give you an analog, uh, of course, electrical impulse signal that would be then sent out and amplified and so forth. Now, I don't think that the, that the microphone that we have here, this example, like I said, it isn't an actual sure one. I don't think, but I'm not sure. It could be a later sure reissue. It could be some kind of um, later reproduction you know, that is uh, a magnetic style, dynamic microphone. I'm not really sure. Raise your hand, raise your hand, you're sure. I don't think it really sounds like a carbon microphone, but you'll see that here in a minute. You could, you could tell me what you think, but uh, I, I don't think it's a carbon microphone. They do talk a little bit about the Model 5 carbon microphones and how they made their debut in 1933. So designed for public address systems, the 1936 Sure catalog touted its attractive modern design and chromium plate finish. Model 5 microphones featured quick way hooks that made it easier to suspend the microphone inside the ring. And it gives the ring patent information and all that stuff. This is the sound of a Sure Model T17 carbon element microphone manufactured in 1943. Since 1925, Shure has delivered the sounds of history and culture to the world. If you if you listen to that real closely, uh, you can hear a lot of cracking, a lot of popping. I've never messed much with, I've never messed any, I don't think, with any carbon microphones that I can recall. So, yeah, it's, it's quite possible that this is not, you know, a true blue carbon microphone. But interesting nonetheless, very cool. And as you'll hear in just a moment, sounds pretty darn good. Beautiful. Beautiful piece of kit. My God, look at this thing. All right, this guys, that'll do it for this video. Oh, oh, I hope you enjoyed this go one. If there. you like these Throw sorts the of videos, with it, more that, of and then you would store the feel. Let me know down the wire in the comments, come and down I will do more through of these this hole in the future. Down the shaft. And for and now, come out of the just sit back right and there. enjoy whatever the hell these things what are, because I have no idea. Somebody, please let me know. Those are awesome. I bet they sound good too. I'm curious what they sound like. This is going to go straight into this little Behringer mixer, so we'll go into here. And we'll EQ it straight up. Uh, we'll turn this one all the way down. Okay, so here we go. Um, I have fixed it. I ran the cable down into the hole and out the bottom and re-soldered the end on. 
This is just a really, truly good sounding, I think, uh, and a very attractive microphone. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Nobody knows the trouble I seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. <laughs> check, 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 check. Wow, this one is way hotter. Check, 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 check. Well, the switch is doing nothing. I can tell that already. Hello, sports fans. Today's copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Chicago National League Ball Club, which has a right of approval of the announcers and is intended solely for the private and non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Chicago National League Ball Club is prohibited. I watched so much, so much Cubs baseball when I was growing up, man, uh, that I've memorized Steve Stone's legal disclaimer <laughs> i think i probably have asperger's this is the electro voice 630 this is what this microphone sounds like check one two. Ooh, that's a bad miss oh and that's a bad miss hello bowls fans we've got an exciting day of bowls lined up for you today hey brad embarrassingly i packed this box but i did not seal it or mail it <laughs> thank you for reminding me uh, I have some other odds and ends I'd give you as I downsize my home in preparation for our move. Jeffrey Thomason. Jeffrey, thank you so much, man. I can't thank you enough for this. this these are beautiful. So there's something about an old vintage mic like this, and they're just so, they're so heavily made. They definitely have a gravitas to them, don't they? So this next one is very heavy. I think I'm going to just keep doing the uh, announcing with this microphone. Uh, but this one comes from Jacob Borrell from Mason City, Iowa. Okay, so uh, Jason contacted me by email uh, one, one day and said he had some transformers he was going to uh, mail to me instead of throwing them away. He said they belonged in a PV Classic, I believe is what he said. And this is these are they. So this one is uh, EIA code 682-625 on that one. I believe that's an output transform. We got three in and three out. That's probably going to be output with some with a, a couple different taps on that. And he, like I said, he said it was a out of a PV Classic, and I, I don't know if he uh, I don't know if he meant it was a PV one of the original classics or like uh, a classic 30 or classic 50, but this looks like it might be out of one of the original classics. So this one is a laydown transformer, but it's also got the stand-up, it's also got a stand-up bell on it. So this one is EIA code, same EIA code, 682, 625. So this would be the 25th week of what? Probably 1986 or 76, if this was one of the classics. Um, and that is obviously the power transformer. It's got to be. But then we've got a third one here. This one is a... This one is a... Basler Electric. EIA code 705-16731. Okay, that's that's a code I don't really recognize. We're missing the mounting screws on this one, but it's been converted to mount differently with some epoxy. So I'm, it looks like maybe this one came out of uh, this one maybe came out of some kind of uh, I don't know custom build or something maybe I don't know. Um, but with all these leads, it's uh, yeah, this almost has to be a power transformer also. So we've got we've got one, two, three, three different taps here. So we've got that's probably our mains, that orange. And we've got one of these will be a six volt winding and the other while the other is probably a for five volt. And this will be the primary side over here. At least that's what I'm thinking. So anyway, thank thank you very much, dude. I appreciate that. Uh, it's always it's always good to have some spare parts laying around because you never know when you're gonna need something. 